Uh, a couple of really good GA pieces. Um, there was one I saw you mentioned this morning, Marie. It was uh, an interview by Michael Foley in the Sunday Times with Eamon McGee, former Donegal defender Eamon McGee. Uh, it's ahead of Guido's All Ireland Club uh, club semi final next week, but it's not really about no, it, is it? It's not. And you know what? I'd read before I read this. I'd read pages and pages of analysis and reports on attendances and finance and ticket prices. And when I read this, I just thought. Everything that is really fundamentally important about the GAA is mm. actually in this. That that other stuff is just incidental because what the GAA gives people and what the GAA about, is about is reflected in this piece. It's about community, values, support networks, friendships, um, all those kind of things. And this piece with Amy McGee was just, it captures all of that because it just kind of documents... What has happened in Guidor, um, the, deaths, uh, the death of uh, Michal Rortri was on their, their team and he was a friend as well as, as a teammate. And like the headline of it at the, at the very top, he said, I, I was his biggest influence. You think, did you make enough of an effort with him when you had that influence? And straight away, you're just thinking about what that community mm. are going through, um, the effect that's having on everybody up there, a really small place. But as you read it then, you, you kind of realise that something tragic has happened, but they have the GAA there to support them and that means mm -hmm. an awful, awful lot. But it's just a beautiful piece because like, the easy thing to do is not talk about these things or not talk about these people and they just become a number, like a, you know, a, however number of, of people have died on the road. But Amy McGee here, he, he makes us realise that um, Royce, as they call him, you know, he was he's more than a number, he's a friend, he's a yeah. person, he's a, he's a brother, mm. he's a teammate. And he just gives us that insight into, you know, the relationship they had and how, um, you know, he was, uh, like he said, he was an influence on him, um, how this young guy was growing up and he idolised McGee. And, and he also just shows us as well how difficult the whole, um, the, the number of weeks have been on him. Just, he talks about going to the wake and not being able to, to look into the coffin to see his friend and how mm. he regretted that. And, um, he he made it his business to go back the next day and, and to go in and, and say goodbye and just telling that I think it's it's a real tribute to 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 Royce as he calls him. Yeah, and I think it's that, so important that's, to say it. Yeah. That paragraph in particular was probably the the most yeah. chilling, the toughest to read, even about how he was at the wake and he couldn't look down. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. Uh, at yeah. me Hall and had to go back a, a day or so later yeah. before the funeral. And it's very brave to say that as well, yeah. you know, to, mm. to give people that insight. But I think it's 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 just really nice because it lets us um, know him a little bit. You yeah. know, lets yeah. him, let lets us know me Hall a little bit because um, you know, so many so often these people, you know, we just we just forget about yeah. them. But now we get to see that, you know, he's he's more than a number Absolutely. He's, he was such a, an important person to so many people. Yeah. And it's just right at the beginning, you know, as you say, <laughs> McGee talks about well, you're there sitting in the dressing room in your usual place, yeah. chatting to each other, and then days roll by, and you, there's a coffin in front of you, and it's just, it's just, it's an incredible uh, piece about that and about you know McGee's influence, and he mm -hmm. kind of brushes it off, and then suddenly you realise, yeah, maybe I did have an influence, mm -hmm. or and what maybe I could have done more, and that self reflection, and also the place the community has, uh, and the awful tragedy involved in it, yeah. and all encapsulated in this piece, and brilliant, a brilliantly written yeah, piece. Yeah, and as the well. importance of the GA as well, and and like he says that you know they've got a game now, and they're not going to try and you know it, it would be disrespectful to make it about him, yeah, you know, but yeah. they, that they would like to help the family to to just forget yeah. for a minute, just to kind of get caught up in the moment. And um, th like that's that GA, that's everywhere. That's yeah. communities all over the country where um, it's more than just it's more than just a game, that it's it's a way of life, that it's yeah. without it, people can't survive and that it's so important in times mm. of tragedy that you can lean on the GA, that you can go to your club, that you can go to your friends, that you can go to your training, that the yeah. parish, the everything, your identity yeah. is it's it's there and it's it's wrapped up in the GA as well. Yeah. Because you know, you always get the cliche, the tightly knit community mm -hmm. and you kinda of, what well, what is the fabric of mm -hmm. that knitted community? Well it's, it's in, in in community like this is the GA, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's probably you know, ninety percent of the country, it is that local GA club. Yes, yeah, well, yeah. say ninety percent of rural communities. Yeah, anyway, yeah, and, and and the other sports clubs as well. You know, play hugely important. So that that's the point. There's also, uh, you know, points in it about um, um, McGee himself as mm -hmm. well, which I think is, you know, he talks about Mickey Hart coming yeah. to 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 visit uh, the players as well, and 
at one stage it says, McGee's personal beliefs as an atheist with a passion for science, graphic novels and an outlook that would leave him diametrically opposed to Hart in almost every way, yet there was some comfort in Hart mm. Smith. Mm -hmm. that, that was fascinating, well, wasn't it? It's an outstanding paragraph yeah. that gets in so much and mm. uh, so, so I thought it was a great piece. Uh, and uh, there's other parts to it as well as being an inter-county player and the club and uh, what the, 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 these club championships mean. But, yeah. you know, obviously they're secondary to the, the key point to it, um, but a, a fantastic piece. And I think after reading all the, I suppose, the analysis on the recent drop in figures and the ticket prices yeah. and all that, that sometimes you, you forget about what the J is about. You know, yeah. you're, you're focused on the elite game, you're focused on whether football is good or bad at the moment, and, you know, you're focused on the negativity, and, like, this just strips it back, and it just focuses on everything that's mm. good about the GAA mm. and, and yeah. what it gives people. And I just thought it was a real super piece, and um, it was just the perfect antidote to everything else, and just such a... Like, again, I can't stress how brave Amy McGee is to talk about this because people generally mm. don't. They don't let you... They don't, they don't give you quotes about... Um, you know, their own doubts or how they're feeling, you know, just the, you know, wondering, you know, was he enough of an influence on him? Mm. Like to, to even yeah. be able to say that, like, was was just pretty um, astounding. And as, as a journalist, is it, how hard is it to kind of, to write a piece like this when you've, you've done the interview, you've spoken to someone, you probably have half an hour worth of mm -hmm. absolutely chilling, heart-wrenching stuff on a tape recorder and you're sitting there going, how do I, how do I lay this out? Yeah, it's hard. Because I, I, I would say there is yeah. a tons of pressure to treat it sensitively, mm -hmm. to treat it correctly. I did the a piece with Kenny Shields after Ryan McBride died, and mm -hmm. it was quite similar. And he, you know, he wondered within the piece if perhaps they had trained a little bit too much that week, and you know, he, he questioned things that he had did as well. And but with something like that, like when people open up, like like Eamon did or, or like Kenny Shields did, you know that they want the story out there, they want to talk, they want you to tell the story about the the person that they've lost and I think that makes it a little bit easier because they've given you what you need, they've given you the words that they want you to say and then you're able to just kind of weave that as best you can mm -hmm. to, to, to pay tribute to the know to both of the people to the person that has passed away and also the person that has has given you these words and, and shared their their thoughts with you as well but it is uh it is difficult and it is a pressure but um michael foley just did a, a wonderful job yeah it really is uh absolutely well worth uh reading this weekend even if you've zero interest in gaelic games whatsoever yeah. i think it's yeah. just about it's about sport at the very yeah. root of it it's yeah. about you know club community friendships yeah. mm. the yeah. fact even that he's saying um you know from the time as a kid, McGee coached him in school. McGee was his superhero in Donegal costume. He wasn't in the first team squad, but leading into an All Ireland semi final, Guido needed everyone pulling them forward in one direction. On Sunday, McGee Snapchatted him a link to a documentary, No Reply, No Panic. Yeah. Then he saw the news yeah. four men killed in a single vehicle crash in Donegal. When he saw his brother's name flash up on his phone that night, he knew. No. Yeah, it was, mm. every, it's, it was chilling, really. Mm. It was really chilling. And I, I said earlier today that the emotion in it is breathtaking, mm. and it really is. Yeah. Um, and as you said, it's, it's, it's for everybody, whether you're interested in GA. Like, um, again, there are, there are actually quite a few layers to this as well. And, like, it's funny when I think of Eamon McGee, I, you know, I don't ever really think of the vulnerabilities that we're seeing here. And he talks as well about how he had to... Um, you know, he retired and how difficult it was and, you know, how he started to, to get a little bit down and he had to reprogram himself mm. and, and to change his identity, reprogram his identity so that he wasn't just the footballer and he was a dad and a professional. And I'd say there's an awful lot of people who will read that as well and and relate to that. So, like, again, for Eamon McGee to, you know, lay himself yeah. out there as well, it's, yeah. it's fascinating. Yeah, and even on the footballing side, there's a very interesting line. He says, when McGee was made captain in 2017 of the club, uh, his first decision was to pass it on to one of the younger players as a message. This was their team to shape. Getting the hammered in 2016 by Nave Connell in the county championship had left them bereft of hope or a plan. Beating them in the county final last year and stretching their ambitions to an Ulster title was a startling measure of their progression. Just the, the notion that, yeah. you know, I imagine being named captain of your club is an incredible honour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In those small clubs as well where it's just completely ingrained in life. Yeah. And the idea that you're just going to say, you know what, I've had my day out yeah. here. It's I'm not going to make this a team for the future and, yeah. Yeah. you know, give it to a younger player. Yeah, yeah. 